Welcome to day 17 of the 30 day my D for SOC analyst challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring SOC analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along, I would highly recommend that you pause this video and start from day one if you haven't done so already. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to create a dashboard focusing on RDP activity that was generated from your Windows server that you created back on day five. Let's get started. Our objective here is to create a similar map that we did for our SSH activity, but this time we are focusing on our Windows server, specifically with authentication attempts related to RDP. And to do this, you want to make sure that you're on your Elastic Web GUI. And on the left hand side, you want to click on the hamburger icon and then select maps. And from here, we can start writing our query to begin generating our results. But because I don't remember exactly the query that I used, I will actually go back over to my discover tab and then click on open and let's select the search that we saved. Now I'll make sure that my time is set to, let's say seven days, just to make sure we have some data and we do. Now I'll take note of the query itself. So the query is event.code colon 4625. I'll open up my notepad and underneath my SSH query, I am going to paste in my Windows query. So I'll say event code is 4625 and agent.name is my DFIR dash win dash Steven rocks. Then I'll go ahead and copy this out. Let's go back over to my maps, paste in my query and hit update. Do make sure that the time is changed to seven days and now we should be good. Yes, we don't see any data yet, but that is because we need to add a layer. So I'll click on add layer. I'll select Coralpleth. And for the EMS boundary, let's go to world countries. For the data view, I will select the dot alerts and the join field. Let's do source.geo. And remember, we are looking for the abbreviation for the country name and that is located under the country ISO code. So I'll select that. And there you go, we have some events. Wow, 39,000 failed events are coming from Russia. Jeez, that is a lot of authentication activity. Let's go ahead and save that and I'll click on save. For the title, I am going to say RDP failed authentication. And we did create a dashboard earlier in our SSH video. So what I'll do is select the dashboard that we created, which is my DFIR dash authentication dash activity. Click on save and go to dashboard. And now we have the SSH at the top and RDP at the bottom. This is looking to be pretty cool. So the next thing we want to do is create a similar one, but this time focus on successful authentications. Now, if we go back over to our event IDs, so I'll search up event 4624 and select the ultimate window security. Recall that there are a bunch of different logon types. Now, specifically for RDP, it is logon type 10, and it can also be logon type seven. What that means is that I'll need to create a query that will look for event ID 4624, focusing on either logon type 10 and logon type seven. So let's do that. I'll go over to my discover. I'll change the event code 4625 to 4624 because we are looking for successful authentications. And let's hit enter here. I'll expand the first event. And what I'm looking for is what is my logon type field name? Because again, we want to look for logon type 10 and seven. And right here, this is a logon type five. So if I go back over to the ultimate windowsecurity.com reference, taking a look at logon type five, this is a service service startup logon. And let's see, where is that located in? That would be this one right here. So this field name is winlog.event underscore data dot logon type. So this is the field name that I must use. I'll copy that out. And in my query, I will say and, and put it in brackets, paste in that field name and I'll say 10 or paste again, seven. Let's see if we have anything. And we do, perfect. So this RDP successful attempt was actually from me when I RDP'd into our Windows server to install Sysmon. Let's copy this out. And actually what I'll do is save it as well and call it RDP successful activity. Save it and under my dashboard, let's duplicate this one here. So I'll click on the three dots, click on duplicate, change the title to successful authentication. 
put in an S here, authentications. And then I'll edit my query, paste it in like that, hit update, and save and return. So my name did not change yet, so let's do that here. RDP successful authentications. And there you go. So we have SSH successful authentications and RDP successful authentications. Let's change this over to 15 minutes. Let's see what kind of activity we got here. So within the last 15 minutes, there were no SSH failed authentications, nor were there any successful authentications. But for RDP, ooh, we have some here. We have four events from, let's see, let's see if we can zoom in here. We have four events from Asia, in particularly Indonesia. Cool. The last thing I want to do here is make our dashboard just a little bit nicer. And what I'll do is list out the username and count along with the source IP as a table, along with our map. That way we can see at a quick glance what user was affected and where it was sourcing from. To do this, I'll head over to my hamburger icon and let's click on, or actually, since I have a tab here, I'll click on the discover tab and let's open up our failed activity and it appears that I overwritten it with a successful activity so that is my bad. Let me create another one here. I'll just remove this and put in 4625. So these are all of the failed activities. I want to click save as new search and I'll put in failed activity. There you go. Now if I click on open I should have two RDP saved searches, one failed and one successful. So with the failed activity, what we want is the time, the source IP, the username, and let's add in the country as well. So under source.geo.country underscore name, I am going to click on this plus icon and let's move the country to the very left. Click on the three dots and click on move left. And now the country name is in the second column. So the country name, source IP, and the username. Now that we have our two saved searches, let's go back over to our dashboard here and just make sure that we save this out. And then on the top left corner, you wanna click on create visualization. And when you're in here, you wanna go over to your notepad and let's copy out the SSH query here and paste it as our query. Click on update. I'll change the time to seven days just so we have some data. And now we can start dropping some field names into our table. I'll begin with the timestamp. I am also interested in the source IP, so I'll search for that. And by default, we have a bar chart. Now, I don't really want this. Instead, I want a table. So I'll click on the drop down and select table. Now I can see the timestamp. Well, this one says per hours and the top source IP. We can actually change the position by dragging our timestamp on the right on top of the top three source IPs. And now our timestamp is on the left hand side. I do want to include our username. So I'll type in user.name and let's drag that in here. And let's just include our country name as well. So source.geo.country and we want the country name. Drag that in and let's reposition this. I want the timestamp at the very left. And then I want the username, the source IP, and finally the country name. Now that I think about this, this is breaking it down to three hours. As you can see, timestamp per three hours. Instead, I just want to see the offending IP address and the affected user account. So I'll go ahead and just remove the timestamp. And now this looks a lot better. Next, let's do a little bit of configuration for the rows here. I'll start with the username by clicking on the top three values of user.name and currently it shows three values by default. I'll change this to 10 and then under advanced it currently groups the remaining values as other. I'll just uncheck this that way it doesn't group it by other and if you take a look at the table if it groups by other you'll see it like this where it shows other and it doesn't show you the actual IP address or whatever the value that you're looking for. So that is why I unchecked the group remaining values as other. Now let's do the same for source IP. I'll click on the top three values of source IP, change the default from three to 10, click on advanced and uncheck group remaining as other. 
And the last thing I want to do here is sort the count of records to descending by clicking on the three dots and click on sort descending. That way the top values are at the top. Whereas if I were to do ascending, it will start from the lowest. And I personally would rather descending first. So just like this, we can go ahead and save this out by clicking on save and return. And I'll change the title to SSH failed activity. And I'll bracket this as table. Let's put this in between our SSH and RDP activity. Now let's do the same for successes. I'll simply duplicate this, drag this up here, just like so. I'll change the title to successful, hit apply. And just so we stay consistent, I am actually gonna change my activity to authentications. So SSH failed authentications and do the same here. And looking at the table, I did notice this top three value of source geo country underscore name. I forgot to change that, so let's change that. Let's click on the three dots and click on edit visualization. From here, click on the top three values, change the value to 10, click on advanced and uncheck group remaining values. And that is good. Apply and close. Let's do the same for our successful. Click on the three dots, click on edit visualization, top three values, change this to 10, go to advanced, uncheck group, click on back and apply. Awesome, now we just need to configure our query to focus on successful authentications. We can do this by clicking on the title and then select edit for query. Change the event from failed to, I believe accepted. And there you go, we have our successful SSH activity here. I'll click on save and return. And now we have at a glance our SSH activity. Now let's do the same for RDP. I'll go ahead and duplicate my SSH failed authentications and drag this at the bottom. And let's go ahead and edit our query here. But before I do that, remove the copy and let's change the name to RDP failed authentications, hit apply. And now let's change the query. So we do have our query in our notepad here. Go ahead and copy that out, paste this in, and here we go. So everything is configured as is. Now we do get a warning for our top 10 values of username. So if we highlight that, it says this might be an approximation. For more precise results, you can enable accuracy mode, but it increases the load on the Elasticsearch cluster. Now we don't really need that. This is more so just for a high level overview. So I'll just leave it as is. Click on save and return. And let's do the same for successes. Click on the three dots, duplicate, change the title to RDP successful. Authentications, remove the copy, hit apply. I'll take the query from RDP successful authentications. So simply copy this and let's paste it in here. Click on update and there you go, save and return. And now we have our username, source IP, and the location of where a successful RDP connection occurred. And just like that, this looks pretty awesome. We have a nice little eye candy with our Coropleth map. And then we have our table with our SSH activity. Similarly, we have it for RDP as well for both failed and successful authentications along with the table as well. So now at a glance, I can see exactly what username was being used where it was coming from, and what country, along with <laughs> the total attempts. And then if there were any successful attempts, I could see immediately what username was used and where it came from. The last thing to do is make sure you save it out. That way you don't lose any progress and we are good. You should now have a total of two alerts and two dashboards. By following along, hopefully you are starting to obtain the confidence in building alerts and dashboards. I would highly encourage you do try and build some additional ones as I am curious to see what you can come up with. In the next video, I will go over a common tactic slash phase called command and control, along with a framework called mythic, which some attackers may use to establish a successful command and control session. As a reminder, I will be doing a giveaway where one lucky winner will win a free voucher for the My Defer Sock Analyst course. And additionally, there will be three one month passes for Try Hack Me up for grabs. Details are provided in the description down below. If you're an aspiring stock analyst, I would highly encourage you to try and participate to level up your practical skills. 
Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.